In today's video, we are going to get Heather, my wife, set up with her very first own dozen arrows that she will be taking measurements from her setup, her draw length and bow weight, and then we'll reference an arrow chart and she'll select her very first arrows that she can shoot out of her bare bow. So people in the comments section have been asking for a lot more uh, beginner related type of content. And that's, that's <laughs> definitely her. Um, and uh, so we're trying to fill that void on this channel. And instead of me pretending to be a beginner and really trying to get there, you know, my wife, Heather, is very interested in shooting archery. Uh, she likes bare bow. Why do you like bare bow? I like the community of the bare bow people, mostly. They're always a lot of fun and... Even though I didn't shoot, they would welcome me on, you know, the line and joke and laugh and we're always inviting. Yeah. So I thought, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, I agree. We're at the point now, well, she's at the point now to where she definitely needs some arrows. She can consistently hit targets at uh, up to her point on distance, right? Which is what, 20? My point on. Yeah, her point on is like between 20 and 25 yards. Yeah. So not very far at all. Some of that is due to the arrow build. The arrow is very, very long still. We could shorten those and her point on could go back further. But, you know, there are some really good, affordable, budget-minded arrows on the market out there. Like the Easton, the Easton Inspire specifically. I think it's, it's it, they're a really, really affordable arrow. I don't know the exact retail, and we're going to grab them. They're a really cheap, all-carbon arrow that goes up to a 2,000 spine, which is more than weak enough for what she's going to need. Um, the only feedback I have, if I was watching the beginning of that, when you first started talking about the selection, it was like another language. I could not keep up. I had no idea what you're talking about. And so if the video is geared towards new people, okay. like it was like, you might as well have been speaking French. Okay. I think we're still recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For people like me, because it went very fast and I, I couldn't okay. understand. Or maybe it's fine and it no, was just No, no, no. Um, well, so what, what part of it don't, like literally none of it or? Um... I understood the measuring and I understood once you explained this, but like when you were explaining like the different grains and the arrows and like, cause you already had an arrow picked out, like what led you to decide that arrow versus all the other arrows? Okay. Like if somebody was a beginner and starting out, I guess you gave them the explanation of. But we can talk about that more. So. But maybe it's not necessary. No, I think it is. I think you're right. So before we get too in-depth with the technicality of what we're actually looking for for an arrow for Heather here, um, let's explain, or I'll explain my position as to why I kind of decided and honed in on one particular arrow. Because I didn't really talk to her about that 100%. And so she had a really good question as to, you know, why are we headed that direction as opposed to other directions? And I think that'll be something really good to add to this conversation and discussion. So that way you can help make a better decision at home as well. Why did you choose the Inspire arrow as opposed to all the other thousands of options of arrows? And is the Inspire, is it carbon or aluminum? I think you said carbon, yeah. but why did you choose carbon? So I went through and kind of just went to, I went to Lancaster Archery Supplies website because they have all the, all the arrows. They have the price breakdown of everything too and they have all the specs readily available. Mm -hmm. Specs being um, the straightness tolerance, the weight tolerance, and the spine of the arrow. So straightness tolerance would be, if I were to spin this arrow, how straight is it? Does it bend? Is, it, is there a bend in it? And you see that as the arrow is spinning um, or not, and straightness tolerance has something to do with that. Um, weight tolerance is how much do the arrows actually weigh from arrow to arrow to arrow. Um, that matters because when you're shooting, obviously the arrows being straight matters, but the weight matters because a lighter arrow will hit higher on the target and a heavier arrow will hit lower. We wanted an all carbon arrow for you because it's lightweight and you're, one of the main goals that you have is being able to shoot further. So when you add up that in addition to price point, because still beginner, still new, getting new to this, 
have no idea where the crawl marks are, have no idea at anything at all. It's, it's totally unknown still, yeah. especially when you go to a new arrow. So cheap matters. You miss the target and you break an arrow, you're not going to cry over it. It's, it's a few dollars that got lost, uh, not $50 when you go yes. to the super high-end arrows. And so that's a big, big difference, especially as I, when I was growing up and getting used to the sport, I lost dozens and broke dozens of arrows. <clears throat> it just happens. Price point was very low, but that within that price point window, having an arrow that would fit your needs. So some arrows that are cheap are only available up to, we'll say, a 600 spine. Um, and quickly, what spine is, is if you have two points on this arrow that are 28 inches apart, and you hang a two pound weight in the middle of it, how much does that arrow bend due to the weight that you hang on it? 600 means it deflects 600 thousandths of an inch, so 0.6 yeah. inches. A 1,000 spine arrow would be one inch of deflection. A 2,000 spine arrow would be two inches of deflection. So it's, it's a pretty simple way to, to measure how stiff these arrows are. And in general, you need a stiffer arrow to maintain higher bow weight without breaking the arrow or hurting the bow and vice versa. Lower bow weight needs a lighter arrow to fly properly. So we needed an arrow that had a very big large range of flexibility and selection to fit the needs that you have. So yeah. um, narrowing it down and kind of like being more budget-minded than uh, precision-minded yes. leads us to that arrow because at this point we don't need an arrow that's plus or minus one thousandths of an inch over yeah. a 28 inch span. We need something that is lightweight, gonna fly fast, going to be mostly durable enough to handle shooting into target stands because <laughs> stuff happens. All I even time. do it still. It happens. <laughs> so you need an arrow that will hold up to the abuse of what a beginner archer is going to do. And if that breaks, it's not the end of the world. So or they I just get another in one. the brush behind the yeah, target. Hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> but so that's the point of why we're headed towards that type of arrow build. That makes so much more sense. Good. <laughs> What do you want to, like, you have a couple goals that you want to do with archery. Why why are we even trying to buy you new arrows? So I'd like to be able to go to our local range and be able to go more than, like, further away than just that 20 Yeah, feet, 20 I mean, meters. anything past 25, she's aiming high. And really so, high. You, you know, you're covering the target as you're aiming, and it kind of, it's not as fun. Yeah. Definitely not as accurate. No, we like to play games, and yeah. I want to be able to one day... Kick my Win one of those yeah. games. I've come close. Yeah. So Once. there's it's a, the range that we have local to us. They have a, a feed, feed a range, and then they have field ranges and 3D ranges, all sorts of different stuff. So we get to just walk in the woods and shoot arrows and have fun. And you want to shoot further. And eventually potentially shoot some tournaments, I think like we're thinking maybe about. Maybe some field tournaments. Yeah. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. So if we do uh, feed a field, world archery field, whatever it is. That one, it's a 50 meter maximum distance, um, and then NFAA field is an 80 yard maximum distance. So there's no way that this arrow is going to make 80. It would if she aimed like she was shooting clout, but that's not fun. So the, we're going to try to set her up with a lightweight all carbon arrow that's built for her so she can get as far out of a point on as possible. I also would like to go up and um, draw weight. Yeah. So I would <clears throat> like something that can if possible, be flexible to grow with me. Yeah, so this is something that is very common for beginner archers, you know, whether that be youth archers or just people just starting for the first time. You're not quite at the maximum draw weight that you would like to be. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're going to, with this set of arrows that we get her, we're going to build in the ability to grow with them. Um, I did a little bit of research on what's available for those Easton Inspire arrows. They're a four millimeter arrow, I guess, and uh, they offer various different points, but it was an 80 to 130 grain break off, which will really allow us to fine tune her setup. And as she gets stronger, we'll be able to break the points off to stiffen the arrow up some for her. So she'll grow with the arrow. We could shorten it. We could do all sorts of different things. And because it's affordable, worst case scenario, you know, we spend another, It's they're probably less than $70 for the dozen, I think, cool. uh, for the shafts. So super affordable. We're, we're going to build in growth uh, within the system for you. So that way she can get stronger as we shoot more. So this is going to be a bit of a start to a series, I guess, a small little series of how you would select arrows for beginners um, or starters or youth. 
and a couple of things you need to measure in order to figure that out. So we'll go through that in this video. Later videos, we'll get her set up where she'll you'll align your own bow um, and set center shot and set some basic tuning parameters, and then we'll go actually bear shaft tune her bow, and we'll see how far her point on gets. I mean, our starter is between 20 and 25 yards. So once we get her arrows set up, we'll, we'll see how far that goes because it'll be more fun for her to shoot further distances. Definitely. And she'll shoot more accurate at the closer distances with arrows set up properly. So it's really simple. You only need a couple of really basic things. Um, all this stuff, if you don't have access to it, like a bow scale or things like that, you can come upon those relatively affordably. Um, you don't need a bow scale that this one is marked a bow scale. You can actually get a luggage scale too. Generally, there's a way cheaper through Amazon. And oftentimes the bow scales are just marked up and have a label of a company on it. So I'll put links in the description below for all the things that we're using in this, like the bow scale tape measure, uh, stuff like that. And then that way you guys can reference that in case you're interested. First thing, there's two things that you need to know when it comes to selecting arrows. Arrow length and bow weight. That's the only two things. So it's a little tricky to measure bow weight on a bare bow because you don't have a clicker, uh, unlike an Olympic style recurve, because you can just pull back the bow until it clicks and then let down. With bare bow, you need to either have a partner um, or be able to reference what you're doing in a mirror if you're doing it alone because this, sorry, this arrow <laughs> is too long. So what I will do is I will have her pull back and I will take a marker and mark the arrow where it meets the front of the riser. And that, that's with her regular finger tab, a regular anchor, and pull it back to the correct draw length that she uses. And then I'll have her pull it back with the bow scale to where the marked mark is, and I'll say, okay, go ahead and let down, and then that's how we'll get her bow weight. Cool. And then we'll measure the estimated length of the arrow that we're going to be working with, reference an arrow chart, and then uh, order some arrows, and in a couple weeks we'll produce another video. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to have her point just out here towards the wall um, and get in a decently comfortable position where she likes to be and then I'm going to take this sharpie and mark the arrow in the front of the riser. So go okay. ahead. Yep. All right, go ahead and let down. So another way you could do this is um, the range that I grew up in, they actually had these bow scales. Actually, it was a fish uh, scale or a grain scale or something that was hung from the ceiling on a th through a, a chain series basically and then you take the bow and you can actually hook the bow on the scale like this and then pull the bow back like that and get your reference on the mark um, that is another option and another way to use this the way that i've been using this because i don't have a system set up for that i just hold on to the scale like this and just pull it back and uh then you get your bow weight. Uh, we're working in pounds. That's how all arrow selection charts are. Should we put a target or something over there so I don't put a hole in your wall if I screw this up? We'll put a target over the hole in the wall. So we want to make sure it's zero. And uh, yeah, you hook it just under your knocking point or underneath your knock. So now go ahead and try not to touch this. There you go. And then pull it back. A little more. Stop. Let down. That one will be a little less. 26. 26 and a quarter. 26. Yeah. So, so we're going to call it 26 and a half pounds. We'll just say 27 because we're going to round up. If she plans on going up in bow weight at all, a draw weight, um, it's always better to go on the higher end of the estimate. So we're just going to say 27 pounds. That's a lot for a starter, so don't feel discouraged at all. And we marked this arrow here to the front of the riser. Now, if I were to measure from the groove of the knock, not the end of the knock, but within the groove, to this mark and add one inch that is her draw length not her arrow length because what we can do is we can especially if you were a youth archer somebody that was going to be growing i would get you arrows that are much longer than your draw length so that way you can grow into them that makes sense so if we're going to buy arrows for a youth you'd want to reference the arrow length not the draw length even though all the arrow charts so why do you add an inch it's just like an industry standard thing. This is just a standard of how they measure draw length. It's, I think it's called AMO draw length. So everyone would do that? Everyone would measure to the front of the riser and add an inch, and that is your draw length. I don't know why, Perfect. but it is. So if we look at the chart, and I'll do a close-up here in a little bit, most of them, they will say your arrow. Um, these are the newest ones that say your arrow length. Finally, 
after years and years and years, they would always say draw length. And people referenced their draw length, went with longer arrows, and then their spine was totally wrong. So it's always important to use your arrow length and then your draw weight uh, that you are using. For compounds, you use your peak weight. For recurves, you use your peak weight at full draw. So the way that you should be properly measuring your draw length is you go from the groove of the knock, so where the string would be pressing against, and then you would measure to whatever mark you are using as a reference. Again, if you're going to be a youth archer growing or you have a, a young one that's going to be growing, add a couple inches of their draw length in anticipation of them growing. It'll save you a lot more money in the future. Um, obviously, that's different if they are a, like a national level competitor, then you might want to build their arrows specifically for them in that moment. Um, depending on their goals and your goals. But for this purpose, because our goal, or Heather's goal rather, is to see how far of a point on we can get to, we're going to make them basically as short as possible. But we're going to build in a little bit of leeway into this, possibly about an inch or so. So we'll go to this mark that is in front of the riser, and we'll add an inch to that, and that's going to be our reference for her arrow length when we're referencing the arrow chart. So is that inch still the industry standard inch or is that for just for our purpose? purpose, basically, because if so we can why? cut an inch off, say if we ordered the incorrect spine and it happened to be a little bit too weak okay. because we bought them an inch longer, we can cut it down up to an inch and still be safe without risk shooting your hand off, basically, or the arrow oh, falling off the rest desirable. and it'll stiffen the arrow up. So then we didn't buy the wrong spine I see. just in case we bought it too weak. So then how do you take into consideration the hope for increasing draw weight? Because I would love to be over like 30 pounds. And that's another portion into adding an inch to the draw length or the arrow length because as you go up in bow weight the arrow will become weaker so then you can compensate so by shortening the arrow to stiffen it back up. That makes sense. As well as if I'm right on that one particular point that's available um, that fits the Inspire shaft because it's a four millimeter point supposedly it has break off select sections. So instead of it being a 75 grain point that the, uh, the whatever, I think they're nickel coated points, whatever they call them, um, instead of using that one specific weight, we can break off the points and make it lighter for you to stiffen the arrow up as well. Great. So two different ways we can build it into it. So you go from the groove of the knock to, and something that I like to do, <clears throat> I like to go use the one inch mark as the reference because it's a lot more accurate than the end of a tape measure. Oh because sometimes the end is a little bit askew. And so then with our measurement, we're at 27 and a half. So we're at 27 and a half, but we're at the one inch mark. So you're actually 26, 26 and, a half. and a half, but then add that one inch that we're going for buffer and it's about 27 and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So when you look at an arrow chart, they're basically all in one inch measurements. And then over here on the right side is our recurve bow scale. So if you look on this Easton uh, arrow selection chart here, it goes 21 to 27. So mm -hmm. instead of using that 21 to 27 one, we're gonna bump down and use the 27 to 32. Because if she grow, if you go up in draw weight, you'll be in this next category rather than the previous. Right. So we'll use the 27 to 32, and your arrow is gonna be 27 inches or 28 inches. So because we're at 27 and a half, we are gonna reference both, and then we'll just decide which way to go. So. So what would be a deciding factor? Like, how would I know which one is best if well, I didn't have you? Sure. Sometimes, <clears throat> like in particular, this Easton Inspire arrow, it goes in 200 spine increments in the upper ranges. So it goes from 1,400 to 1,600 to 1,800. And if both of them, say, were to reference 1,600, then that would be on the weak end if it was long and on the stiff end if it was short. So you kind of can make that decision that way. Um, you know, if you want to build in even more strength increase, you would go with the 27. If you want to not build in nearly as much and you don't feel like shooting tons of weight eventually, then you go with the 27 inch selection. You said 27 both times. I meant 28 the first time, 27 okay. the second time. I'm like, I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, uh, second line down and then we go over to, we'll do 28. So that says oh. T3. So then you look at and you try to find group T3, which is over here. Mm -hmm. And so then you find down the uh, Inspire. Inspire arrow. 750. And that's a 750 spine. So a 750 spine is actually a lot stiffer than I was anticipating. 
Um, so, because you're shooting higher draw weights than I thought, so that's good. I um, that. But if we look at T2, just to see, that's 27 inches, T2 would be, Inspire is 900 spine. So you can see there's a huge jump from 750 to 900. Wow. And for me, because we're already building in extra stiffness, we should probably go with the 900. So even though I ant we anticipate me getting stronger, um, like I was on a good path before we got COVID. Yeah. For strength, not yeah. archery. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so why would you make that decision? Like what, what's going on in your head so that other people would know? Yeah. So the reason that you would, that I'm saying we should go with the 900s instead of the 750s is because if we were to build you an arrow that is for your exact setup right now, your exact draw weight with the correct arrow length. Okay. If you're 26 and a half pounds, you're within the 21 to 27 range. And then we reference a 27 inch arrow because a 26 and a half would have been right. pretty close to perfect. That's T1. So if you look at T1 and you reference the Inspire, they're referencing a thousand spine. Wow. And a thousand spine is pretty weak compared to a 750 spine. That's a huge jump. Yeah. Um, a thousand to a 900 is definitely a much smaller jump. And in my experience, going from a hundred spine difference. At what is this? Um, let's see. 18, 16. That's a 756 uh, spine. A 900 makes more sense because... In my experience, jumping from an, a thousand, well, a 100 spine change at my draw weight with my skill level would be easily a seven pound, six to seven pound bow weight change. And that's wow. a huge jump. When that's you're going from 27 to 34, that's a massive draw I mean, weight jump. I was thinking 27 to 30, that's yeah. only three pounds. So if you're only building the three pounds into it and, you know, we're already so supposed to be using a thousands and you want to grow up. 900 makes way more sense. So after this, uh, we're going to order her some arrows and uh, we're ordering them through Lancaster and we'll order all the components for them as well. And the next video that we will be doing after this one is having you taking your arrows out of the box and cutting them and gluing in components and fletching them and setting them all up for herself. So that way she can learn how to do it and you can learn along with her. Uh, if you're interested in seeing the more of this type of series and other content on this channel, hit that subscription button and the notification bell so that way you're notified when we upload new videos. Uh, we're definitely going to be um, following this series out to the end. Like I said, we'll have her um, set up and tune her very own setup on her own with my guidance and hopefully you can follow along and learn with her. This is a limb. These are limb bolts. Or are these? Neither? I don't know. <laughs> this is a rest. This is a plunger. I don't know what that is. You put a stabilizer goes in here, I think. Bow weights. Dampener. <laughs> Did I get anything I'm right? I'm going to put that on the footage. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.